Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. So my power draw bar started leaking. It's funny because one of the questions I get from folks when they're emailing or asking about the Tormach and my experience with it is what have you had that's gone wrong with it or problems? And I almost feel bad saying that I really haven't had any issues or problems or maintenance things with it because it makes it sound like I'm fibbing. And the truth is I really haven't. Um, you want to keep it oiled. I try to check the ways, make sure that the oiler is working. And to be honest, I should probably, um, there's a process you can like tear down the oiler system or go through and check it to make sure the ferrules aren't leaking or whatever, but I don't. Um, and I just, well, I haven't had any problems. So this started leaking and it, um, I fixed it by tearing this thing apart and swapping out t two of the seals. Um, and I also cleaned it out when I did that. I've since bought from Tormach the power draw bar seal replacement kit. Um, and for the record, the thing was horrendously dirty inside, which is my fault for having, um, I think I had dryish air, well, probably not, but I definitely had some crud. Back in New York, I used a lot more black pipe and there was just, well, I have some, I think I have some video of it. I'll try to insert in, but it was horrendously filthy and no doubt that's what caused um, the leak. So uh, hard to complain about after four or five years of use. So um, I thought what we would do today is sort of more of a maintenance or fun issue, but I actually learned a lot and this thing is really cool. I naively expected it to just be a single um, pneumatic cylinder. Like I just know nothing about these things and it ends up, it's a multi-stage, three-stage I think, and it's pretty darn cool. I did a little bit of research, so I thought we'd do, we'll take it apart, show you the easy way to do that, some of the tools you want, and then we'll talk about uh, how these things work and we'll put it back together. So if you're gonna do this project, three tools that I really recommend. Um, a 12 millimeter hex key. I, Grandpa had one, I didn't. And for us, for those of you in Europe or metric world, you probably um, may well have one of these, but for us Americans, 12 mils are bigger than my normal set metric sets went up to. Um, you need a long tool with a five millimeter hex head on the end. So I put one together um, with these extenders and ratchet and so forth, but very, very handy. And then you need to buy retaining ring uh, pliers like these. Um, I bought these from Harbor Freight and they were cheap, but honestly, uh, and there's links in the video for this stuff, I would probably buy the other ones I'm linking to from Amazon. They're channel locks, they're reversible, and the ratchet on these Harbor Freight doesn't work for at all. And I will see, I had a really hard time the last time I did this, getting them off, and it may, it'll be fussy on video as well. But if you're on a budget, you can try to make these work by all means. So let's dive right in. If you haven't seen this power draw bar, uh, first of all, if you own a Tormach, you need to own one of these. It's, it would be absurd not to have one with your machine. Uh, but if you haven't seen one, it's pretty ingenious the way they designed it. It's a traditional R8 draw bar. So you tighten the draw bar with these uh, stack of six Belleville washers in here. So the tool remains tight regardless of what happens with your air pressure in your power draw bar, which is of course important. You don't want your tool to be held in based on um, an ongoing live air pressure. And then when you push the foot pedal, you'll see the cylinder act and it compresses that stack and that releases your draw bar, which releases your tool. What's cool though too is the way this is all set up, there's this collar here that's attached to the spindle. So it's pulling on straight up and it's, what it's not doing is transferring that force through the casting of your um, housing. Look, I'm not an engineer in that sense. I don't know if it would cause a problem or not, but I have to think it's better to be pulling straight up on, on that metal machined part where you got the support and rigidity versus trying to flex or bend this cast iron around here. Anyways, this thing has been bulletproof for me. I can't tell you how many thousands of times I've used it. So first things first, to take it off, we're going to use that long tool again, ratchet with a five mil on the end, and we're just going to loosen this screw on the left. And once you get it loose, I bet I can get it by hand. Let's see here. It's really hard to get in there if you don't uh, have the extender here. Let's see if that's enough. Yeah, that'll loosen by hand. There's a lock washer underneath this, so try not to use it. Uh, again, another little ingenious design. Um, you need something over here anyway to fasten it in, but um, what this does, this screw holds a, a, a cam offset, and what that does is it, when you rotate that thing, it changes the position of the center line of your a bore uh, piston over the draw bar, so that way you can make sure it's pushing down right on center and lets you adjust it 
very easily. So, okay, we got that off. Now we just, um, you know, I gotta, hold on. I shut off my air to this thing and there's gonna be a little bit of air bleed out. So let's see here. The lanes are, the lines are labeled, again, quite nice. We'll get a little bit of air. Eyes on, guys. Obviously, definitely wear your eyes if you're gonna activate this thing with the, the cover off. No air there, maybe here. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, so now we're free, so just nice and easy. You don't want to drop this thing, that's for sure. Okay, that's off. And here's that uh, cammed piece I was talking about that just sits on right here. And I'm going to go ahead, you recommend, and put this screw back in and just tighten it down four or five turns. That way you do not lose it. Um, the draw bar is a replaceable wear item, as is the collet, but honestly, like I use mine for a really long time, I mean, probably two years of time or something. Um, okay, let's go uh, tear this draw bar apart. Okay, let's grab our 12 mil wrench. And these were um, not as tight as I thought they'd need to be. Um, they are snug, but not anything crazy. Okay, no order to these either that I could tell. Now, remember the lines go this way, so we're gonna disconnect and just leave the center one connected. Okay, now the Eclipse. That's actually, we could take it apart first. Okay. And there are the three stages. Uh, yeah, that'll be an Eclipse issue. So here's the top cylinder, and I had already cleaned this up a few weeks ago when I did my emergency swap, but they were basically covered with that type of grime that you can see in there. A lot of it came off um, some scotch Bright and just went easy because you don't want to chip these or nick them, and you want to just take your time and be careful. Um, in fact, I'm sure a lot of folks watching this, I hope so, will have more experience with, uh, with these. So I'm curious to know what I'm doing right wrong, and you know, one of the questions I already know is, I'm gonna, do I want to you know, oil or grease the O-ring at all. I'm, I don't think I'm going to, but we'll be curious to see what you guys say. So next step, which is not gonna be fun with my little Harbor Freights, is going to be to put your eyes on and try to get this E-clip out. Now, a retainer clip out. I'm gonna go ahead and say that someone's gonna tell me a better technique to do this um, after I, you watch me struggle right here. What happens with these Harbor Freights is they don't ratchet back and I, can open the clip up pretty easily, but I can't then, oh, ah, uh, shit. Yeah, there, they just bent. Hold on, gotta go fix them. They bend back, so let's try that again. You do have to um, pay attention to keeping them straight, because if they twist, well, there's a lot of pressure on this spring, so. Keep them from crooked. Now, see, I've got, that's what happens. Darn it. Potentially. See, I've got the tension off of it. The issue is moving it around. There we go. Oh, maybe I got it. See, it kind of, the whole thing kind of wants to twist on you and rotate. You got to get it to lift it out. There it goes. Ooh, hot dog. That, yeah. That's why you wear eye protection. Okay, so there's one of the pistons. So that should just push out. Yeah, that's what our E-clip is for. And so. There we go. Okay, so pay attention though to the order. It's a little bit easier on the top because you know that's where the E-clip was. This goes in like so, and then this piece. But do do pay attention because you don't want to uh, goof. And that goes in that away with like that. So just you know mark them or create an order. Take pictures like this because you don't. Uh, there is a front and back to all these things. So. Um, the seal that I swapped was the, this is actually the bad seal for me right here. We'll replace it in a second. Um, that is the bad one. It was in the bottom um, cylinder, which was what was, which is what actually contacts, this guy, sorry, which is what actually contacts the um, power draw bar. And it was this, it's that seal that you see right here. So when it was leaking, in the retract only position, so it was uh, leaking when I was not engaging the power drawbar, which meant it was draining my compressor, and it was leaking out to the atmosphere. 
Uh, my thought, which did work, was if I put it in this first stage, it would leak into the second stage, which would have a finite amount of leaking because it would just fill that second stage and reach pressure and, and be, be done. So um, that did work. Uh, but this thing is pretty cool, folks. I didn't, uh, I guess, really have an understanding or appreciation of multi-stage pneumatic cylinders like this. But it's basically just three of these, I think. Let me make sure. Yeah, three of these stacked um, in line. And, and so why do you do that? Well, my first thought was, does it actually magnify or multiply the compression? You know, a, a first stage is compressing into a second stage. It's a lot higher pressure. And that looks like that's not the answer. What they do is two things that's pretty cool. This is only, I think, a four inch cylinder or approximate. And what that does by having three stages is it's the equivalent of a much larger diameter cylinder. So obviously if you had a giant 12 or 14 inch pneumatic cylinder, it would be able to push down with a lot more force. We don't have that much real estate in the, a place like the spindle and the head of the Tormach. So by stacking three of these in a row, you get a much greater effective pressure with, um, uh, with only um, four inch or, or so of uh, circular footprint. What's amazing about these things is apparently they would just take regular shop air, as we all know, 90 or 100 PSI, and can almost create like hydraulic-like pressures. I don't know the tonnage or poundage rating on this thing, but it is pretty impressive when you know when you're cranking down on that draw bar with a three-quarter wrench how much power there is, and it's perfectly reliable, and it obviously uses cheap shop air. Um, the other thing that's cool is because there is no real need to retract with any force. You just need to retract to get it up. So they use three units of air, whatever that is, to compress because there's three chambers. But to retract, I guess it only has to use one unit of air, whatever that is. So they use a little bit less air, which for the power draw bar, maybe it's not a huge deal. But in, yeah, I think it's a bigger deal if you're doing something like stamping or shearing where you're pushing down many times a second. But anyways, I thought that was pretty cool. So let's grab the um, kit here from Tormach 32093 and let's start replacing these seals. We do want to be careful. I may have to reuse one of these old seals, and you just want to not be scratching and dinging and um, these things around. So I'm carefully going to take a scribe, and you guys probably are yelling me for using something like a scribe, but just gently slip it under there, and if we walk it around, it comes right off like so. Put that in an old pile, and then here's a new one. Um, just start feeding it around like so. Keep going. Uh, this is obviously one of those guys. Again, be careful. This uh, this may not be as reusable. Um, I want to get a. Sometimes you want to get a second tool once you get it started to uh, to get in there and kind of help out. Let's see if I can roll this off a little. Not losing it back in the hole. Yeah, there it is. And there we go. And again, you can just see the crud in it. Um, none of this was a problem. None of this was leaking. It was literally only that last one. Um, well, actually, we'll take it out and see if we can see anything when we do pull it out. Um, I'm going to grab a, a rag and clean that out. I'm going to try acetone. Um, i got to be careful to clean it off, though. I don't know if it would cause any bad reaction with that rubber or not. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to... Oh, that is coming off pretty easy. Let me just try to get it in there a little better. In fact, you know what we'll do? We'll use a pair of needle nose just to guide the cloth through. I don't think it has to be perfect, again, because uh, it wasn't perfect to begin with, and it was working fine. Easily, some gentle Scotch-Brite happens to fit in there well. I don't want to... Uh, leave any residue though one reason i was using one of those blue rags because they they don't leave fibers behind um, so let's clean that out again okay that looks pretty good um you know what i didn't pay attention to whether there's an up or down i don't think there is on these rings but that's the kind of thing where you do want to pay attention to um, okay, so let's just see if we can stretch this on. Oh yeah, it doesn't look too hard. Not at all. Sweet. That was, that was easy. 
Now, um, I'll have to refer back to my picture. I don't even remember which way I put that. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm going to write. I was debating whether or not to do this, but um, this is the bottom. I don't think a little bit of Sharpie is going to hurt uh, on that at all. And I'm going to write B on here as well. Yeah, that's actually obvious on this because you've got the socket head cap screw holes on the casting. But anyway, um, now this one, I, I had a hard time getting it out. This is the actual leaky one. So I'm curious to see what you guys say on it's a good way to do this if you wanted to try to check them, but keep them. So I started it with the um, with a scribe or a sharp tip thing that because you need to kind of get in there. Maybe a flat blade, blade screwdriver would work. And then I'm trying to work it back and forth. Actually, that's not that bad. Um, and once you can get in there with something that's more blunt, like a pair of these needle nose, then you can just roll it out like so. But again, I'm, I really tried to be careful not to gouge into the circumference of that ring because I think that is an important. Um, you know, sure, the rubber helps accommodate for some variants, but uh, try to be careful. So do want to pay attention to that orientation. In fact, you know, we're just going to go ahead and pop this new one in. Um, this is, I think, the bad one. And nothing, nothing crazy jumps out at me. Yeah, I mean, it does, doesn't look as good condition as the new one, that's for sure. But uh, I don't see a, a gouge or a line or anything crazy in it. Anyway, in we go. Just uh, fold it in. Actually, this is all really easy. No, no real need for anything crazy on this part. And if we take a look, those should, if I got that correct, to go this way. No? Oh, it must go that way. Yeah, I got to go look at my picture and see if I got that backward. But that feels, that feels, actually, that feels really good. Um, that feels that does feel better than um, I had done that test uh, off camera before and you can just feel the pressure of squeezing that together. Okay, I'm going to fast forward through uh, doing the rest of these things and we'll take a look. We'll be back. I'm going to put a mark A and A to show that those are mating surfaces and let's see here. Then this is bottom I'll put a B for bottom or bottom I'll write out we can always um, acetone that off if we don't want the sharpie marking there and I'm going to mark the casting here as well like so okay These honestly feel good. Um, I, I'm going to replace them, but I'm going to keep them as well because I, I don't think those are, are you know, throw out condition at all. Actually, what are you guys supposed to do? Um, obviously, you want clean air coming into this thing, but I guess this is a tool. This power drawbar should have lubed air versus dry air. Honestly, it's not something I focus a lot on. We don't run you know, lots of um, pneumatic tools that I know are supposed to have um, air that's been lubed, although I guess I just answered my own question if I'm saying, I know that those are supposed to have, uh, pneumatic tools are supposed to have lubed air. Well, this is a pneumatic tool. Um, those are different though in that they're incredibly high RPM or, or cyclic rate. Um, okay, let's get that. Yeah, it's harder to, I had a hard time getting it start, or started with just the pliers, but you roll it back with the scribe. We can get it going. Okay. Wipe that out. And in goes our new one. 
Okay, so A mates to A. Great. And let's just put this one back together. Bottom goes to bottom. So actually we can take this out. Oops, I already see a cat. That's what I want to try to careful of. I got a little piece of cloth in there. You, I think you really want these things clean. In fact, let's uh, give a little acetone wipe and just get that inside good. Bottom, bottom. Uh, you know what? I got this in wrong. This, I think, goes in, uh, from the underside. Yeah, I think that was right. Yeah, so there you can see, you look, your two pinholes. So when it's in its up position, that's going to push it down. And then when, it, when the air goes into the bottom hole, it's going to retract it up. It's hard to push. Whew. Okay. And, oh, we got to do one more E-ring, or whatever these things are called, C-clip, retaining clip. These things are a pain in the butt. Well, go figure, folks. Man, I had... Oh, you know what it was? Was it getting them back in that I had such a hard time with? I don't know. That, those were both easy. Um, whatever. Okay, let's mark these things. And, well, this is all obvious because you've got the scrapes actually in the... We know the bottom of the, of the whole frame. So push that out. And then this goes out the bottom. I gotta tell you, when I uh, saw how dirty this thing was, I was really embarrassed. Uh, it just made me, it was just embarrassing. I was like, how is that thing? I mean, it was disgusting. Um, I was actually amazed. It was it was working fine. Uh, I couldn't believe, until the, the little leak happened, I, I couldn't believe how, how didn't something didn't happen earlier given how filthy it was. Okay, new E-ring. Mm-hmm. And do one of these. Oh man, that one's the worst. I wonder why the bottom one is the dirtiest. I don't get that. That was the one that was leaking too. Um, hmm, I don't know. You know what we got to do? We got to figure out a, a cool thing we can do like a little stamping Arduino thing where we control one of these cylinders because there's so much power and they're pretty fast and we obviously already have shop air. Um, let me think about that because that would be a fun little project. Let me push it in there a little with these to clean them out. Okay, not perfect, but significantly better. See, I don't want to scrape it because I don't want to do anything to, to ding that inside surface. I'd rather have a little bit of residual dirt um, and don't drop the thing. Holy cow. Okay, boom, boom, and oh, yeah, we gotta replace this seal. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, I cleaned that one out already. In goes the new one. Pulk's pretty easy, right? Okay, let's put this thing back together. Um, so this goes in like so. Now let's put the E-clip. I keep calling them E-clips. That's probably not the right term. Um, let's put this thing in first because I don't want... You don't want pressure trying to push this thing... Um, up, which makes it harder to slip the, the 
retaining ring in the groove that you got. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Nice and easy. <laughs> that was easy. Okay. Push this in. Make sure no debris in there. <clears throat> Woo! That is tight. Damn. Maybe I will get more force out of this thing when we uh, put it back together. All right. This was the middle one. Like so. Okay, so here's the top. This has got to go in like so, because then the retaining ring goes in right here. Let's see if we're four for four on these things being easy this time. <laughs> Look at that. Well, I don't know what I was doing last time. Okay. And it's got to go that way. Yep. And... Okay. So, before we put the um, screws back in, one of the reasons I like doing this in an organized manner is, I will admit, that last time I put the bolt in, I actually forgot to put the retaining ring back in the top, activated the draw bar, this thing blew out the top, um, didn't hurt anybody or cause any problems, but um, I, I was rushing to get it done and that's just stupid. And I was safe, I was, you know, eye pro on all that, but it was scary. So by having all your tools laid out like this, we can see, you know, for instance, I, um, I have two extra retaining rings, which I don't know if they included them or I missed two. Um, I know we didn't leave any cylinders without retaining rings though so I'm okay with it so let's finish this up and again you know snug but not now let's actually think about it we don't even need to know where these lines went because you can just figure it out if you look at it the bottom two are exhaust we don't need power in those exhausts um, to push it back up or retract, I shouldn't say exhaust. So if you think about it, this is your, your main uh, power or air in, so that's pushing down from the top three ports. All you need is a reverse power uh, or air in the bottom port, and that pushes everything back up, and these two um, don't need the force. Again, that goes back to what I mentioned earlier, so that's pretty cool. And that tells you, I like knowing how things work, that tells you the alignment of them. So let's go put this thing back in the mill. Okay, let's put her back in. Slip that little uh, adjustment piece under it. Don't pinch your fingers and then carefully slide it in place. It should balance, sort of. Keep, uh, don't, don't let it fall. <clears throat> and then let's get that screw in there. It's a little sometimes tricky to get it lined up in that hole. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. And grab. Now we, yeah, it looks good. So we, we need to rotate the hex nut on that thing to adjust the cam. We could. And this doesn't have to be, cr I mean, I snug it down for sure, but it doesn't have to be crazy tight. And, okay, now here's the, Big test. Uh, qu quick sanity check, O-ring, or, or retaining ring, retaining ring, and then four pins are in. Okay, let's hook this back up. And that's labeled bottom, and that's labeled top. Turn my shop air on, and here we go. Sweet! Look at that, folks. 
She works. So hope you guys enjoyed that. And it was a little bit different than what we normally do. But um, very useful, simple repair, easier than I thought. Feels good to have this thing uh, not leaking anymore. And I got to get over this head cold, but I will share with you guys who have stuck around. I've got some green paint on my fingers because I just started probably what is the coolest thing I've ever built in my, in my life. It's just, uh, it's got some more work to do. Probably won't have a video out for at least a month or two, but um, I'm really excited. It's Arduino, it's machine stuff, it's guns. Should be fun. Anyways, as always, folks, I appreciate you guys uh, watching and sharing. You don't have to thumbs up this video. It's just a fun video. So, but, um, no, appreciate the comments. Uh, let me know what else uh, I should know about power draw bars and cylinders uh, for you pneumatic and hydraulic experts out there. I mean, these things are awesome. I, I, like I said, I want to figure out a, an Arduino project to do with them. Anyways, take care, folks. See you soon.